Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Inside Mercer Basketball. We're here with Mercer head coach Bob Hoffman. Uh, coach, so great to be with you once again. Uh, we're starting a new season. Obviously, a lot of uh, new opportunities for some new guys to step up and play the quality of Mercer basketball we've come to expect. Uh, but uh, it's really good to be back with you again. We've got a lot we can talk about. Probably yeah, could talk for an, probably could talk for an hour about some of the things that happened not only last year but the last two or three or several hours. I mean, it was a lot of lot of things that transpired. A lot of great moments uh, that took place for our program and the university. Uh, we're just privileged to be a part of such a fantastic group. Coach, let's talk about some of the general highlights, not only of the past year, but three years. This uh, senior class, most accomplished senior class in Mercer athletic history with some of the things they did. Uh, 27 wins in 11-12, 24 wins in 12-13, 27 and nine last year. Including in there is the CIT championship the round of 16 in the NIT, and then the trip back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1985. Just that alone speaks volumes of what this group accomplished. Yeah, I'm so thrilled of what they were able to get done. Uh, they were a special group on and off the floor, did everything the right way, graduated, got their degrees. Uh, I mean, it, it, the epitome of what a student athlete should be at a college or a university, you want these type of guys representing you uh, we are thrilled that they were a part of what we uh, were able to get to come here and then mm -hmm. they put it together. They worked so hard and they were diligent about everything from classwork to putting extra time in the gym, getting shots up and uh, they were rewarded for the fruits of their labor, no doubt. Our last year in the Atlantic Sun Conference, obviously it was a very pivotal year of a chance to get to the NCAA tournament representing the Atlantic Sun. During the course of that run last year, congratulations to you once again, Coach of the Year, Langston Hall, the Player of the Year, Daniel Corsi, Defensive Player of the Year, and then Jake Gollin, Scholar Athlete of the Year. Just a great round of accomplishments. I don't, is there anything else? I think the, we pretty much uh, cleaned house. Well, it was good. It was a great, it was just an amazing year, and those were special young men you just mentioned. Uh, I, was, I was privileged to get to coach them and drive the, drive the bus, so to speak, and just be around all those guys for uh, what they were able to get done. And they did it together, and they weren't worried about all those accolades that they got at the end. Yeah. That's why they were able to get some, and yeah. sometimes that's hard to understand, but that's, that's the reason their success was at the level it was. Since the beginning of the 2011-12 season, 83 wins, which was 28th among all the D1 programs in the country. And another number that you remind us of, of the challenge of playing on the road. Since 11-12, Mercer's tied with Harvard and Wichita State for the sixth most road wins, 30 road wins. So not all of these wins, even though we were great in Hawkins Arena, only losing one game each of the last two years. A lot of road wins, including a huge one at Ole Miss right before Christmas last year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing what they were able to accomplish. Uh, but our assistants do such a great job of preparing on the road and getting scouting reports, and our guys were interested in the details, and then we're able to put that game plan into practice. And that's, if you walk into a building and aren't fearful of the people you're playing, I feel like you always have an opportunity for success. And that's what our guys exhibited every time out. Well, it was a magical season uh, for the Mercer basketball program, for Mercer athletics, the most amazing in athletic history. When we come back, we're gonna start with the conference tournament and walk through the visit to the NCAA and what followed after that when we return on Inside Mercer Basketball. So here's the game plan. Rush into the Wild Wing Cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers. 100% Angus, 100% great. It's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year. Where? Well, we're back with head coach Bob Hoffman talking inside Mercer basketball. What a great year it was last year. Coach, let's walk back to last spring with the new format of the Atlantic Sun. Uh, we played uh, Jacksonville first, got the win there. Many of us tend to forget how difficult it was to beat a very good USC Upstate team to set the stage to go to Fort Myers. Yeah, they were a tough out, and we'd had great games with them. Uh, Coach Payne does a great job. And then the, that game was back and forth, went to overtime, and. Uh, 
really an unsung hero in all that we were able to accomplish at the end and uh, get to the NCAA and win the conference championship was T.J. Hollis. If he wouldn't have made mm -hmm. the plays at the end of that game, we'd never got there. But it was a, a tremendous run. We got to play those two games at home. Then we got to go back to Florida Gulf Coast and play on their home floor. After we had tied for the regular season championship, they got the bye uh, or got the, got the seed to be at home. Yeah. And we got to turn the tables on them and beat them at their place after they had done it the year before in our building. What a tremendous game, Coach. And that was the first of a couple of games to come when you had tremendous support on the road. The students were there in masses to support you. Well, our administration, President Underwood, uh, Jim Cole, everybody, Ryan Gary, everybody that helped us and all the people that financed the students to make the trip down there. That was a huge blessing for them to be there, even though it didn't seem like a whole lot. That it mattered. Yes. It definitely mattered, and uh, it ended up giving us opportunity for success, and our guys made some huge plays uh, one after another to get to the end of that game. And once, once it was over, it was almost like a fairy tale that we were able to get that accomplished. And then the trip back to Macon, knowing now not only you're the Gay Sun Tournament champions going to the NCAA for the first time since 1985, next thing up, the selection show in your mind. Were you in visualizing any team or teams that you thought we might play prior to the announcement? Well, we had had a team meeting and I actually told the guys I thought we were going to either play Duke or Virginia, depending on who had won or lost that game the day right of the selection show, because I felt like they, that they would keep them near home. And yeah. I, I just, for some reason, felt like that we were going to be that seed. And uh, it ended up being that way. It could have been anything, but yeah. it just turned out that way. And I. I was hoping that's who we would play. Um, I, just, I just thought it was a great opportunity for our university and then play against an iconic team and a Hall of Fame coach when you get those opportunities in that kind of setting. Uh, that's about as good as it gets. It is one of the most uh, uh, well-known programs, as you said, well-known coaches. Also, it worked out a 12 o'clock game so that the majority of folks in the world seemingly, I don't know of anyone that didn't see or listen to that ball game yeah, that day. Yeah, some of the most fun Things that I've been around speaking the last six months in different organizations and uh, doing motivational talks to businesses is to hear everybody's story of where they were yeah. when that game took place and what they were doing and who they were with and wearing their Mercer gear in Colorado or in Europe or in uh, South America, watching a game at a bar somewhere or whatever, and, and people started cheering for us yeah. in those areas all over the place. And, uh, man, that was just... Uh, as I said, essentially a fairy tale. Coach, what was the bottom line of how Mercer defeated Duke in the second round of the NCAA tournament, a team that uh, we've talked about accolades and featuring Jabari Parker, one of the premier players in the country? Well, I don't believe it was an aberration because our guys have been successful on the road in a lot of different venues. And in fact, right before the game, I told them we had not beaten Duke, but it's because we hadn't played them yet. Mm -hmm. and, but we have beaten other teams that had played them. Uh, that were even in their league. And so I was just trying to give them a sense that we belonged, that we could do it, and remind them that we had done it in the past. We hadn't done it at this place or this high level mm -hmm. of stakes, yeah. but we had done it, and I believed that they could do it, and they just needed to believe in each other and trust their principles and stay to them and, and go give all they had. And in fact, to be honest, I felt like we, sh we had a chance to win more games. I mean, that was a great win for us. Uh, but as you know, I mean, Tennessee got us the next next night, and uh, they just shot the lights out. I felt like we we had a good enough team to win more games yep. in the tournament. Has the final seconds waned down? We got to zero on the big board. The Mercer fans are going crazy. Yep. I think everybody in the house, with the exception of the Duke fans, going crazy. A little celebration broke out over in front of me across the way. Did you have any That's idea crazy. what might be going on no, across I the floor? No, I didn't even know what had happened until later. I mean, I didn't know what transpired. I mean, it ended up being a big hit, as you know. And, yeah. uh, I found out, in fact, when we went to a restaurant later in the day, that was a big hit because some girls ran across the room to come see Kevin. Yeah. And because they, I don't even know if they knew we played a game. They just had seen, <laughs> they had seen us dance. You know, they yeah. seen us dance. I was too busy yeah. uh, doing interviews myself and, yeah. I, and later found out I was getting photobombed at the same time yeah, as I was talking. Anthony but, White. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of fun things were happening. And uh, it was a great moment just to see what Kevin, uh, in, in fact, you know this. I mean, he's crazy. Yeah and he's special and he was a big part of our success the four years he's been here 
uh, and he, he made a huge impact and he hit, hit a big shot in that game. He did. He's from North Carolina, so I think that was even a bigger moment for him than some others. President Underwood tells the story that Bud Thomas was quoted as saying that Kevin one day would make himself famous for doing something stupid. Yeah, that's a true quote. You know, it's a shame as we sit here and talk, uh, the seven seniors have moved on and doing yeah, great right. things. It's a shame we don't have Kevin here for yeah. his side of the story. I would love for Kevin to be around. It'd be fun for whoa, him Whoa, 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 wait, excuse me. Uh, come in, excuse me, we're filming a TV show here, but come on in. Hey, we're trying to finish the uh, show. Come on in. Speaking of the oh Nay Nay kid, gosh. Kevin oh, yeah. Canavari, the man himself, oh, got a little piece oh, of hardware with him. Kevin, Good to see walk you. up, man, tell us, uh, hey. you know, it's funny. You come in, uh, we were just talking about the conclusion of the Duke game. Kind of talk us through in the days that followed what you as members of this senior class felt like you had accomplished, not only on the basketball court, but spreading the name of a quality institution like Mercer University. Right, well obviously we had been here for four years and we had kind of been knocking, you know, at that door. Uh, my junior year we lost in the championship after being ranked number one and Gulf Coast cut down our nets. And, you know, sophomore year we made a run. Obviously, senior year we finally got it done. So to really get over that hump, um, so to speak, was really a huge accomplishment as far as on the court. And as far as off the court, it's just really awesome to be a part of somewhere where the whole community of Macon um, really rallied behind us, you know. And uh, I think the best, the best thing anybody ever told me afterwards was, uh, some people that lived in Macon saying that we brought Macon together, yeah. you know, which is, I think that was the biggest accomplishment we got through. Two other things we've got to ask you about, your trip to Bristol, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You became a household name, your dance, everybody at ESPN knows hey, Kevin on a first name basis. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the trip to Bristol. Oh, it was amazing. You know, Jamel Hill and Mike Smith were awesome and all those guys up there. Uh, so much fun being on the TV show, Numbers Never Lie, and you know, they were awesome to me. And, uh, it, I mean, it happened so quick, you know, I mean, uh, some guys went up there and it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. The piece of hardware coach he has in his hand yeah. of all the many athletic events in this country last year and your win over Duke. Now, they call it upset. I would just say the biggest win of the year. But tell us about what it meant for going to L.A. I want well, to hear I your mean, side and Kevin's. Well, the, the fun part was just getting, these guys already graduated. They've kind of gone different places and so, we were able to get back together in LA and hang out some and had fun and they got to be together when they had they weren't worrying about trying to win a game. They weren't worried about anything. They got to see all these stars and shake hands with amazing people that knew their story. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest part of the ESPYs is all the folks come from all over. They all have a story and yeah. they're read there for a reason. And most of the sport, if you're a sports fan, you know the stories, but you get to meet the people behind the stories. And these guys got interviewed by everybody. There was known the man. I mean, nobody knew who I was, but they knew who he was. <laughs> and, uh, I think I think that's the I yeah. think that's the 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 thing I will take away from it is just the joy of seeing them yeah. enjoy each other. Yeah. And how hard they worked to get to that point, and and they never wavered in their belief in each other or who was getting this or who was getting that but they wanted to do it together and they did. Well, we could go on and on about the many accomplishments, but time is at a premium here. We want to take you to the Mercer uh, dressing room, which uh, the team room, which we're in, and show it off here in the next segment. But Kevin, on behalf of the university, thank you and your uh, colleagues, the other six seniors, seven seniors, for all you accomplished Mercer University, a great run. We'll always have the memories. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rick. Thank baby. You. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Take a look at the new team room. When we return on Inside Mercer Basketball. Draw in. Neural speeds increasing to 4G LTE. Brain upgrading to a quad core processor. Precognitive intelligence with Google Now complete. Introducing Droid DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. Well, back with more inside Mercer basketball. Not only has Mercer had great success on the court, Coach Hoffman and his staff have uh, really improved drastically the home for the Bears behind right. the scenes. The den, so the to speak. The den, so to speak. So, uh, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you. This is your house. Well, Got to give our fans a, a view of the great facilities. Well, in seven years, we've really done a lot in this area uh, because we wanted to make it, first of all, we wanted them to understand that they were in something special. And so it wasn't just a locker room, but it was a place that we were going to build relationships. We were going to work hard together. We were going to enjoy moments together. 
And I wanted them also to remember that people had gone before them that had done good things. And I wanted them to have a visible area, and that's what this entry kind of way is. So when they walk in this room, they're going to remember what has transpired. And the first thing is right here, the, the picture, we had another picture of it when we lost East Tennessee State, when we didn't go, go to the tournament was up here prior to this. We just got this up, and they did a great job with it of capturing a moment of when we won against Duke in the NCAA tournament. Just the joy on those guys' faces and the thrill of what they're able to accomplish. And you can see all the way over to where uh, Coach Krzyzewski and I are shaking hands yep. and the people excited about what's going on. The only thing I wish it would have been where you could have seen our students and the fans, yeah. but it was, it was shooting down that way and uh, shooting at the goal. And, and then on top of that, so this has been our theme since we've been here. Together we will. And this is our mission statement that seven years ago, the first group of guys, we went on a, a foreign tour to Canada and we had Mike Edge, a friend that worked for Pfizer that did team building, came in and actually put the guys through an exercise that we came up with as a mission statement. And I don't think there's a, a more succinct mm -hmm. uh, mission statement that is more specific to success than what these guys accomplished. Together we will be successful by becoming one, putting others first in word and deed. And I think those guys lifed it out in everything they did on the floor and off the floor. And so we just kind of redid the whole room. Uh, we got an area here where we feed meals and we can keep, because uh, there's a lot of meals that happen in here. And then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we wanted to make sure every time they walk through here that when I first got here, there was nothing in here for people to see that we'd actually ever won anything. Yeah. And so we went, and there's not been that many championship teams, as you can see, which is something we're trying to change. But uh, three of those are what happened the last three years. There's only 14 or 15 up there right now, and three of those happened the last three years. But we put these up four years ago, and I think it had a lot to do with our success, and these are the different ones. And you can see we left space to have a few left and then we have a verse that we use every year this is our verse for this year talking about honor and honoring the people in the past that have gone before these guys and that they're with them and uh, in our team building and our team retreat it was really cool because we had video footage from guys from way back when uh, James Florence to all you know just different guys that have been here in the midst of the very first years I was here and telling these guys, our new players and our new team, hey, we're with you, and then yep. you gotta listen, you gotta work hard, yep. give them great advice to becoming champions on their own. And Coach, it uh, means as really much good. to you for the individual players to mature as mature adults and, and in the team aspect as much as it does winning on the court, yeah, that they I win want, in life. Yeah, I want them to be great men. And uh, we work on that hard. Uh, Jonathan Howard does a great job of spending time with our guys. We use a book every year to make a difference with that. But this is one great room. Let's, let's go into the other room and uh, we can see some of those things. This is a team room here. We come in here uh, for our team meetings. It's a great space. When we got here seven years ago, it was just an open area and they had some couches and a TV on the floor. And we worked seven years with, along with our Papa Bears and a lot of other people to help us build this into something really special. We have 18 lounging chairs we hope the guys don't fall asleep in because um, <laughs> they lean back. But this is where we come prior to the game, halftime and post game. And then we added this wall here and this is all the different folks that have made a contribution over so many years of Mercer basketball. There's a lot of guys that happened recently. We're proud of that. I'm sure there's some we've missed and we'll add those as we go along the way. But this is a really good nucleus for that. Uh, really, I love the grays and the yeah. oranges, how they're put together. This picture right here, though, that's a good one. it really tells the moment of what took place uh, when we won at Florida Gulf Coast that night in Langston Hall, Anthony White adjoined each other. And then, so every day they see the banners, uh, what has been accomplished. We did that when we first got here. There was only a few of them up. And since then, we've been able to add six more in three years. So that's kind of fun. And then we have our marker board behind this area. This is another fun picture for yeah. me. They, they chose this. I, I didn't choose this picture, picture, but right. uh, 
the emotion and the thrill of the moment. Jake Gollin worked really hard to be a part of that. And then we have where everybody is academic all conference. You can see that these guys are here. Uh, this whole roll right here and a few over on this one are since I've been here. So that's about a third of the academic all conference guys in history of the program have been in the last six years, uh, which is a special deal for me. And then the all conference guys are on down the, the way right here. So we, we recognize them also. We got a little area here once again to serve. And then I think what sets off what we've done is now the, the bear that they did such a great Jack Porter people that did this did a tremendous job with that. And then we got our, our word for the year again going down along that uh, uh, beam. And uh, so it's a special room yeah. for a special group of guys. We spend a lot of time here. It has the reminders of what it takes to be great and, and who has done it in the past. And hopefully these guys want to get their names up in these different areas every day of what they're working toward. They have a vision for what they can accomplish. All right, Coach, thanks for the visit. Uh, a behind the scenes look at what goes on as Coach Hoffman and the team prepare daily and weekly to get ready for what you see on the floor in Hawkins Arena. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, uh, satisfaction, the service, just overall good experience. And you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Coach, uh, we've talked and talked and talked uh, for many months about the transition. Atlantic Sun now behind us, uh, days ahead with a Southern Conference. So as we get into play now here the next few weeks uh, in Southern Conference play, tell us the transition, what it means to our program. Well, after we came back from Alaska, we had our first comp Southern Conference game, which was historic in, in our building. We played DMI at home, who was second in the country in scoring, uh, playing really fast, pressing up and down the floor and uh, we were able to find a way to get a victory. Our guys played great that night. We scored 90 points and held them to 81, which was way below their average. Uh, so that was a huge victory. But now we're getting ready to be in multiple games. We got to play three in a row on the road, uh, which is going to be tough. And then we come back, we play four games in nine days or eight days in conference play. That's going to be a, a, a big time. Uh, road swing and a momentum on how the end of the year ends up playing out because everybody's doing some kind of those big road, uh, either more home games or away games during that, that, that two week period. So uh, we're going to have, have a lot more idea where we fit once we get done with that trip. I, I hope we can really go out and get some of those road victories that we were talking yep. about in the first segment yep. on, in this first venture in the Southern Conference on the road. We talked about uh, new rivalries, Coach, uh, many times. Uh, we've had some great rivalries in the A-Sun, but now some great opportunities for folks to travel with our programs, right. uh, going to Birmingham, going right. to Furman, going to Chattanooga. Yeah. Those are some great new opportunities for our fans to not only have Walker. those teams come here, yeah. but uh, a good trip for a road trip. Citadel down yeah. to Charleston, Charleston, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful town. So there's a, there are a lot of places. I know there's a lot of great places to eat in Charleston. We've got a couple, <laughs> couple of guys on our, our uh, team yeah. in Charleston. So I've eaten at a few of those spots. But yeah. I, I think it is. I think they're, those spots right there, you, you can get in three hours you yeah. know, and find a way to get there. I think there'll be more of those uh, teams will have fans will travel with them than we had in the Atlantic Sun. I, I, I think it should be. Uh, as we get into it and the more recognizable the names are uh, for, for the folks around here, they'll get used to coming out and understand yeah. who we're playing and get excited about those games. Now, what our Mercer fans really want to know, we we first part of the program talked about the great uh, seven seniors, the great work they accomplished. Now, new era, mm -hmm. new players. What are the major challenges for you as a head coach and your staff of getting practically a new team, at least five new starters and backups, 
uh, competitive and back to that level championship form once again. Well, it, it takes a little bit, but we got a great staff and we got some tremendous young men that are working really hard. Um, you know, it's really getting confidence, trying to build confidence, and we're we're kind of up and down right now. We're not at a consistent level of our approach to everything, and that's a learned behavior. Uh, we got a lot of young guys that haven't been in this kind of environment, in this kind of setting, and you know, you have the big academic push because Mercer's a tough institution on that level, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, means their degree's gonna mean something. So they have to work hard. They gotta go to study hall. They gotta do the papers. Or people are not giving them anything. And then, you know, you have the, the grind of what we try to put them through with weight rooms, individual yep. workouts, which they've not been doing in high school or at junior college because most of those programs don't have as many assistants and they don't have as much uh, development time as we do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that part is the piece that they're continued, just as those guys that just went out, when they first got here, it was, a, mm -hmm. it was a transition for them to figure all that out. It takes a little while yeah. to get used to uh, the rigors of, of all the demands that are put on you. Now, as happy and pleased as you were with the progress and success of the last group, how exciting is it for you, a veteran coach, of starting with a new group and starting this process over again? Well, I really like the challenge, and uh, you know, I've been doing it a while, as you know, and you can tell by my hair. <laughs> And I, but I, I think it's just trying to right now put my hands and my mind around what we should be doing yeah. all the time. And I, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, we're, we're in a little better place than we were when we started the year, but we're still not a, a, a completed work by any stretch of the imagination. But I believe these guys will have a chance to compete for a championship before it's over. And I really hope it's this year. I, I think our style of play, is conducive to winning and I think our guys embrace who we are and they have a lot of confidence in our staff and in each other and and if you can work every day and keep putting those daily deposits in the return could be really fantastic and we hope it is something like we've experienced in the past. Well said coach as uh, you always do and you would end on a positive note time to get into SOCON play and we're going to be here every Tuesday night to talk about Mercer how we're doing in SOCON play and should be an exciting season coach I'm uh, looking forward to it always a pleasure to work with you in Mercer Thanks, basketball. We'll be right back in Wild Wings we'll get to go back there. Back the to Wild week. Wings yeah, yeah we'll can't really, wait. That'll be fun. All right we'll be coming from Wild Wing next week when we return with more Inside Mercer Basketball.